A day after Western intelligence officials alleged that Russia was using Iranian missiles to attack Ukraine, a member of Iran's parliament has now suggested that it made sense for Tehran to supply Moscow with ballistic missiles in exchange for soybeans and wheat. Now, despite the denials by top Iranian leadership, Ahmad Bakshayesh Ardestani, an Iranian member of the parliament who also happens to be a part of Iran's security and foreign policy committee, has hinted that Iran might be supplying Russia with ballistic missiles. Now, this development comes as U.S. officials warned about the missile shipment, suggesting deepening ties between Moscow and Tehran. My name is Heem Korsaroya, and to discuss this further, we're now being joined by Dr. Hamid Reza Golamzadeh, Deputy for International Affairs at Tehran Municipality, Secretary General of the Asian Mayors Forum, and Political Analyst from Iran. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to join you. Sir, I want to begin by asking you, how do you assess the Iranian MP hinting at the possibility of Iran's supplies, missile supplies to Russia? Now, we also know CIA chief Bill Burns that, that said that Iranian missile supplies to Russia would mark a dramatic escalation in Iran-Russia military relations. Do you see this as an escalation? No, it's hard to admit, but the reality is that the uh, majority of the MPs are not expertise uh, in, uh, experts in such areas of international relations or uh, defense issues, and they are not speaking based on expertise. Uh, so uh, the the words that has come from uh, this MP uh, reflects that, uh, to my understanding and my familiarity with the MPs and many parliamentarians and the politics in Iran, mm -hmm. is that he he might have just read some headlines and out of that he has concluded it and just uh, generally has said something, and it is not based on information and intelligence that Iran is officially sending missiles. To Russia uh, or is receiving so so and beans and such things in return. So this is just general ideas appearing on the media and on the social media, and they are receiving that and they just mention it somewhere on the media or in some interview or some uh, places and it just spreads on the mass media and uh, turns out to be like this. It is not the first instance and it's not going to be the last instance, unfortunately. Uh, but not all the MPs and not even all the member MPs that are member to the uh, Foreign Relations and Security Council uh, Commission are uh, experts in those areas. It, the the uh, selection of the commissions is based on other criteria. That is, does not necessarily mean that they are uh, familiar with uh, international relations or hmm. with the uh, in the information and intelligence that are uh, going on behind the, the scenes. So um, I would rely upon the official announcement that Iran is not sending missiles to Russia, and um, Iran is working with Russia, it's no secret, and it is clear that uh, the two countries have been working in many areas, hmm. but missiles does not seem to be one of them right now. Uh, right, sir. So you are saying that that comment must have just been a reaction to some online media reports, and this does not reflect a broader strategy between Iran and Russia. That being said, if reports are to be believed, and if in fact Iran does supply missiles to Russia, that would essentially elevate its status as a Moscow ally to that of an active participant in the war. What do you have to say about that? It doesn't necessarily mean that Iran is an ally to the uh, to Russia in that war. Hmm. Uh, Iran is a country with good capabilities in, in weaponry and defense uh, um, weapons and uh, missiles, drones and anything. And uh, as of 2023, uh, based on the JCPOA, the sanctions on and limitations on Iranian missile program and uh, selling weapons to other countries has been totally removed. So Iran is just like many other countries, is uh, free to sell weapons to any other countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, Russia is no exception to that. Iran can sell missiles or drones or other weapons to uh, Russia or any other countries. And it doesn't, need, it doesn't need to be translated into an alliance with Russians in the war. That's business. That's the first level. Is, it is a business. Mm -hmm. And uh, Iran uh, is actually... Uh, staying uh, aside from the conflict in Ukraine, 
between Russia and Ukraine, and there's no standing in that. It is correct that Iran is more in line with Russian uh, policies, and the positions are more aligned with one another, especially when it comes against Western uh, policies, especially the American sanctions and uh, involvement in the region, uh, or in the, the joint war that they had against terrorism in, in Syria. Uh, so, yes, they are working together, but it doesn't mean that Iran is supporting Russia against Ukraine. It was just recently that uh, Iran uh, congratulated uh, Ukrainian government on the national day. Mm -hmm. Iran is uh, establishing both sides, uh, both times with both of the sides, and is not taking any positions in that. But unfortunately, it is Ukraine that is trying to uh, libel Iran to be against it, and is playing the uh, playbook and agenda of the Western uh, policies to accuse Iran of such supports, mm -hmm. just to find someone to blame and create a false flag, actually. All right. So you mentioned sanctions earlier. The Iranian MP also said that Iran has been circumventing sanctions through its partnership with Russia, as you mentioned as well. Does this essentially mean that the West sanctions on Iran as well as Russia have proven to be ineffective? Uh, in the past, the sanctions were effective in terms of uh, making difficulties for any country who was sanctioned. But this means three decades ago or two decades ago. Hmm. Uh, in recent um, years, especially for the past decade, Iran has been able to actually circumvent uh, the sanctions and, but, and also has been able to nullify the sanctions, the impact of the sanctions. Sanctions are, are considered as supposed to bring a country to its knees hmm. uh, so that they both go down to the American pressure. Hmm. But now it has failed to do so. And what Iran has been doing in the past decade has is to uh, work with other sanctioned countries like uh, Venezuela, like Syria, like uh, Russia, like Yemen. And with working, in working with together, they have created a market that is uh, almost uh, needless of the rest of the world. The, the capacity that they have in business with other countries is being uh, actually um, working, uh, is working to a considerable extent and can respond uh, well to the needs of and demands of the, the, the such countries. Mm -hmm. So yes, by working together, Iran and Russia are uh, making American sanctions ineffective and they are not uh, uh, crippling uh, countries like Iran or Russia or even other allies, uh, ju just like Venezuela that I mentioned. All right, sir. So do you think with where things stand at the moment, peace can be negotiated anytime soon between Russia and Ukraine at a time when the war is spilling beyond Ukraine's borders? Um, you know, I, I cannot see Ukraine as a uh, real player in the scene. Mm -hmm. It's just a puppet regime that is being played by the Americans. Americans are using not only Ukraine, but also the whole Europe to follow their own policies against Russia, to weaken Russia and engage it in a war that is in favor of no one uh, but the Americans. So uh, when Americans actually uh, when we decided to leave the uh, Middle East region, uh, from, to leave from uh, Iraq or other countries, Afghanistan, Iraq uh, or Syria in, in, in our region, it was for two reasons. First, to stand against Russia, and second, and, uh, to stand against China. And China, of course, is the, uh, the most important uh, uh, factor in the agenda of the Americans. Mm. Uh, they decided to do uh, the game against Russia by using, and at the cost of the Europeans, especially uh, Ukraine at the forefront of that. So uh, Ukraine and Mr. Zelensky is not a serious player in that uh, agenda and they are just being played by the americans and the europeans so uh, if there is going to be any uh, peace or any ceasefire or any deal between them it means that the green light should come from uh, washington or other uh, western european countries um, sooner or later this needs to happen because uh, this war is futile and it's not uh, bearing any fruit for uh, especially for the European side. They are just insisting on uh, fighting against Russia based on the prejudice and, uh, let's say, uh, prejudgments that they have 
uh, that they want to uh, create and demonize a country just like Russia or Iran or China, that they are our enemies. And they want to define themselves by an, a, a, the other, which right now is uh, Russia for them. Uh, so if this, is, this policy is stopped and they come to their sense, hmm. they can make a deal with Russia either based on the land or the other factors that could be discussed by either side. All right. Well, sir, thank you so much for joining us on Beyond on World is One with your perspective on this. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.